Hey guys, today we have three stories, one on LSD and shrooms, one on the Biden administration, and one on what's the deal with that GOP uh, legalization bill. A lot to cover here, so we're gonna go quickly through it. Uh, the first story is one study that has come out that has found that um, there is really not much of a difference between a trip of LSD and a trip of mushrooms when you take away the knowledge of what you have just taken. There are a lot of things that we kind of attribute to both trips in, a different, in different ways, uh, different nuances. One is that LSD has a longer trip, of course, and also it has a more synthetic feel, a more jaggedness to it, whereas mushrooms is much warmer, much earthier. Uh, there's a lot more bliss to it. And I found a lot of people typically enjoy mushroom trips more than they do acid trips. However, a study was just conducted that had taken 29 participants and didn't tell them what they were taking and gave them either LSD, mushrooms, or a placebo. And first off, everyone knew what the placebo was. That was easy. However, when it came down to differentiating the, the trips between acid and mushrooms, uh, there, were, there was not much agreement there and it was difficult for them to discern which was which and a lot of people got the question wrong and that's fascinating because what it shows is that there is a clear um, huge importance for set and setting that means set is your mood going into the trip and setting is the location in which you're doing the trip those two things have always been very important when it comes to uh, psychedelic trips but this goes to show that it's just as important for even when people don't know which drug they've taken, it changes the actual set and it changes the mindset going into it. And the fact that you know that you're taking LSD is probably one big contributing factor to it being a more synthetic, more metallic uh, sensation for you. So that's an interesting study. Second story is one, unfortunately, that has come out of the Biden administration. Um, last year, firstly, they said that the administration wasn't going to exclude people who have a positive marijuana on a test. However, then things got a little bit more muddled when people were actually fired or were let go because they had marijuana and I guess they were probably, I think they were told not to and they continually tested positive in these tests, probably thinking that they weren't going to get fired. They did get fired. So we're now seeing that the Biden administration is not as progressive thinking as we thought. Now, jump ahead a year and we see that um, security clearance is on the line for some people who not only have marijuana in their system, but also people who have invested in marijuana companies. And that's an interesting thing and it's a new thing. Marijuana companies are up and running across the country in many states. However, they are not legal federally to be up and running. So if you have invested in any stocks in marijuana companies, then the administration says that you have questionable judgment. And the quote itself specifically is, eligibility may be negatively impacted if an individual knowingly and directly invests invests in stocks or business ventures that specifically pertain to marijuana growers and retailers. Decisions to willfully invest in such activity could reflect questionable judgment and an unwillingness to comply with laws, rules, and regulations. And this is a revised employee conduct guidelines that they have just released. So uh, this is a new thing, clearly, and it's probably because more and more people are investing in marijuana companies and they're trying to basically keep people out from doing that. Um, it's unclear what, which companies they're talking about, which stocks they're talking about, because again, these marijuana stocks cannot actually run on NASDAQ or any American stock exchanges because they're illegal federally. So um, if we're talking about the Canadian stock exchange, it's legal there. So it's a little iffy here. And I guess they're trying to keep it vague so that they just basically have make it blanket and say, like, just don't do it. But it's unfortunate that they are so adamantly against federal marijuana legalization that they would go so far as to say don't even invest in marijuana companies. But next story, we'll just ignore that, that the president is against legal marijuana and we'll go to Nancy Mace, who is the Republican senator who has created her own federal legalization bill. And the big question um, when she announced her bill was how will Democrats react to this? It seems that she has spoken to some Democrats in the House and they will bring her bill up. They will start talking about her bill 
after the Moore Act is passed in the House. And that's rather good news. It means that some Democrats are willing to discuss her bill and willing to kind of move forward on it. Uh, whether or not the Moore Act will go anywhere, that is very, my view on that is very pessimistic. I think most views are very pessimistic on the Moore Act, but it will probably pass the House. It will not pass the Senate. It has no chance. But there has been talks recently saying that they will bring the Moore Act up uh, this month, sometime in March. So if that gets passed through the House, then there will be room for the Nancy Mace bill to be brought into the, into the House and things can go forward from there. And that's when you'll start to hear more and more Congress people talk about this bill and talk about it uh, legitimately and, and whether or not it's something that, that people are willing to pass. So that means that maybe by the end of this month, we'll see much more forward momentum with the Nancy Mace bill, which I'm a fan of because of the skeleton nature of it. And then the idea of social equity can come later. I know a lot of people disagree with that. I understand the disagreement with that. Um, I myself sometimes disagree with that, but that's how it is. And I, I think more dialogue and discussion about this bill is, is worthwhile and important. And those are the three stories today. Um, it's New Music Friday, so one of the one of the bigger albums to come out today is one by Nilu Faryanya. Um, it's her second album. Her first album I liked, it was a bit rock heavy and uh, it was interesting. This one I feel like brings her in an even more interesting direction. She just creates very strange, unique compositions that are very, very well detailed and, and fascinating. And there's almost a little bit of a new age quality to, uh, I'm sorry, not new age. There's almost a bit of an art rock quality to the way that she creates her songs. The new album is called Painless by Nilu for uh, Yanya and go check it out. That's the end of it's 420 somewhere. We're taking next week off because I have to go to PA to do to edit something, but I'll be back the next week after that and I'll see you then. <coughs>